kepada pemerintah-pemerintah daripada Malaysia. Rombongan Malaysia yang datang ke sini bertujuan yang terutamanya untuk mencari penyelesaian berkenaan dengan hutang Datuk Seri Najib semasa dia jadi Perdana Menteri. Hutang berbilion-bilion ringgit untuk membangunkan uh, uh, projek-projek yang tidak bermanfaat kepada negara. Inilah satu masalah yang terbesar. Namun demikian, kita juga dapat peluang untuk melihat beberapa perkembangan di negara China ini. Kita dapati bahawa mereka telah membuat uh, kemajuan yang pesat dalam berbagai bidang, termasuk dalam bidang pertanian, dalam bidang uh, otomotif, dalam bidang uh, radio control uh, uh, untuk drone, dan juga dalam bidang IT Penggunaan IT Dan for e-commerce Yang di, Dipusahkan oleh uh, Encik Jack Ma Daripada Alibaba uh, Ini semua memberi uh, Idea kepada, yang banyak Kepada kita uh, Dan kita boleh guna uh, Pengalaman mereka Dan uh, hasil Research mereka untuk mem, 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 memperbaiki lagi cara-cara kita uh, mengadakan perusahaan di Malaysia. Dalam bidang pertanian umpamanya, kita kagum dengan kebolehan mereka uh, menanam uh, sayur-sayuran uh, bertingkat-tingkat. Uh, boleh buat di dalam rumah ataupun di atas bumbung ataupun di di padang bertingkat-tingkat kerana mereka tidak uh, hanya berharap kepada cahaya matahari sebaliknya mereka menggunakan artificial light iaitu cahaya daripada uh, LED light dan ini boleh uh, memberi mereka ruang bertingkat-tingkat untuk uh, Tanaman mereka mendapat uh, cahaya matahari yang artificial. Uh, ini adalah sesuatu yang perlu kita belajar kerana kita dapati di Malaysia ramai daripada penanam padi terutamanya mereka miskin kerana pengeluaran padi tidak memberi keuntungan besar kepada mereka. Lagipun kerajaan terpaksa memberi subsidi yang banyak. Sebaliknya saya dapati mengikut Presiden Xi Jinping bahawa walaupun penduduk negara China ini berjumlah 1.4 bilion iaitu 1400 million uh, manusia tetapi mereka dapat bekal makanan kepada mereka uh, mencukup dengan mencukupi mereka dapat mengeluarkan uh, apa nama beras sebabnya yang cukup untuk 1.4 million manusia bilion manusia ini sesuatu yang kita perlu belajar kerana kita berempas pulas membayar subsidi memberi apa nama baja dan sebagainya tetapi kita hanya boleh membekalkan 70% saja untuk rakyat yang berjumlah cuma 30 million. Uh, kita kagum dengan kebolehan mereka mengeluarkan sayur-sayuran, sayuran, buah-buahan dan sebagainya uh, yang mencukupi bahkan mereka boleh ekspor uh, hasil pertanian mereka. Uh, sebaliknya kita masih membeli beras daripada negara lain dan kita memberi sayur-sayuran daripada jiran-jiran kita. Sebaliknya kita kalau kita ikut cara yang dia perkenalkan di negara China ini kita tak perlu import makanan kita. Sebaliknya kita boleh bekal makanan dengan mencukupi. Selain daripada itu apa nama? Alibaba, Jack Ma ini telah memperkenalkan cara-cara pemasaran 
iaitu orang kampung juga boleh pasarkan keluaran mereka ke seluruh dunia. Umpamanya kalau mereka mengeluarkan kuih dan pasaran mereka cuma terhad kepada kampung ataupun bandar dekat-dekatan tetapi dengan menggunakan cara online marketing yang diperkenalkan oleh Jack Ma ini mereka boleh jual semua barangan mereka ke uh, seluruh negara bahkan ke seluruh dunia jika mereka ingin dengan itu mereka tidak harus uh, tinggal miskin kerana uh, pasaran mereka begitu kecil dan banyak lagi lah yang kita belajar di sini dan mereka juga uh, bersetuju untuk memberi latihan kepada pegawai-pegawai dan uh, apa nama profesional kita supaya kita dapat guna cara-cara mereka bagaimana sebuah negara yang begini besar tidak menghadapi masalah ke- ke- kekurangan makanan bahkan mereka tiap tahun 15 juta pekerja akan lulus daripada universiti dan sekolah dan mereka perlu wujudkan jumlah pekerjaan sebanyak 15 juta untuk mengatasi masalah pengangguran. Kita dapati sekarang di Malaysia banyak ramai yang menganggur kerana kita tidak dapat wujudkan peluang pekerjaan kepada mereka. Kita yakin kita boleh tiru mereka tetapi sambutan daripada rakyat kita juga penting kalau pun kita adakan uh, peluang pekerjaan baru tapi kalau kita tak nak kerja kita akan hadapi masalah yang sama jadi saya dapati bahawa lawatan uh, rombongan ini ke negara, negara China uh, memberi banyak maklumat kepada kita jauh lebih banyak daripada uh, uh, masalah keuangan kita saya juga dapat jelaskan apakah yang dimaksudkan dengan uh, foreign direct investment. Jadi saya tekankan bahawa foreign direct investment bermakna membawa masuk modal teknologi mendiri kilang di Malaysia menggunakan tenaga orang Malaysia untuk mengeluarkan barangan untuk tempat tempatan ataupun ekspor. Itu yang dimaksudkan dengan uh, apa nama foreign direct investment. Dia tidak bermakna membeli tanah di Malaysia untuk mendirikan apa nama bandar-bandar baru. Itu rakyat Malaysia mempunyai kebolehan uh, dalam bidang itu dan kita tak perlu foreign direct investment uh, untuk uh, uh, bahagian itu. Jadi banyaklah uh, pelajaran yang kita dapati dan saya percaya bahawa selepas ini kita boleh Anta pakar-pakar kita untuk belajar daripada negara China tentang kejayaan mereka. Itu itulah yang dapat saya perkatakan dan jika ada soalan-soalan saya. Uh, so, uh, one of the key focus uh, for this visit is the renegotiation of uh, contracts given to the Chinese uh, contractors. Have you started the negotiation and what was the feedback? That will be done at the uh, official level. My my job is to establish principle. The investment in Malaysia is not about bringing in workers and all that. It is about bringing in capital and technology, not workers. I didn't say workers at all. We want our people to be employed, and they agree. They agree. Hmm. So, uh, what's the ECRL review uh, discussed? in your meeting for any of the meetings with the Chinese officials? No, in, I, I, about Chinese officials, the, the officials will, will be able to answer, but as for me, I explained to them why we cannot have the ECRL, why we cannot have the high-speed train. It's all about borrowing too much money, which we cannot afford, we cannot repay, and also because we don't need uh, those projects uh, Uh, for Malaysia at this moment. Maybe later on, yes, mm. but now we don't. Need. So our problem is how to solve our financial uh, deficit. So the, what was the response from uh, President Xi Jinping? They agree. They agree. Of course, how we, to, how we will have to do this, 
will be left to the official when they negotiate. Mm. Uh, but the money has been drawn down for the loans that has extended to ECRL. So what would that mean in the future? Well, it has been drawn down, but uh, not the whole amount. Uh, more than 80%. Uh, more than 80% only for some project. But uh, there's uh, ECRL, I think uh, it hasn't reached 80% yet. And the work done is about 13%. So we need to find out where the money is paid when work is not done. All these things will be negotiated by our people. So what, what happened to the project? The project will not go on because at the moment we don't need it. Later on when we need it, we will restart. But at the moment, the priority is for reducing our debt. With that debt, if we are not careful, we can become bankrupt. That is the goal of Najib. So to, would it be correct for us to, to take your word that ECRL will be cancelled for the moment? For the moment, yes. Uh, it will be deferred uh, until such time when we can afford and maybe we can reduce the cost also if we do it uh, differently. And just to clarify, the, you said the Chinese, office, Chinese government agrees to this uh, With the Chinese government, they don't talk about the company. Mm -hmm. They talk about the government. Mm -hmm. They see our point of view. I explained to all the three leaders uh, why we have to do this. And not one of them said no. They understand our problem. They understand why we have to uh, reduce our debts. So, very positive response from uh, President Z and Premier yeah. On this yeah. Both the Premier Lee as well as the President, as well as the head of their party. And more about the two pipelines project, one in Sabah. Same, one. same. So it will be yeah, cancelled. We, we don't need, find a need for those. It costs too much money and we cannot afford it. And we have to uh, either cancel it or defer it to a later date. But do we have to pay compensation for it? Well, if we have to pay compensation, we have to pay. This is a stupidity of the negotiation before. Why do you enter into such agreement? You pay huge compensation <laughs> if you don't go ahead. There must be exit clauses in all agreements, and the exit clauses must be fair for both parties. But there, we, if we cancel, then we have to pay huge sums of money for the... Uh, the high-speed train, we have uh, negotiated and if we fail to do it, the, the amount of uh, compensation is more than half a billion, not ringgit. <coughs> Such stu stupidity has never been seen in the history of Malaysia. So, so that means the ECRL, there, there isn't an exit clause in the agreement that they have signed. We are talking about ECRL in, in China. In China, it, China is a contractor and they lend the money. And we have explained to them that we cannot afford this. So we must find an exit, a way to exit this project and at the lowest cost possible. Lowest cost possible? Yeah, we, we will have to pay compensations and all that, but uh, this is our own people's uh, stupidity. You can't blame the Chinese for that. How much compensation for ECRL? ECRL we haven't worked out, but it will be quite substantial. What about the pipeline? Uh, pipeline also we haven't worked out yet. But Tung, uh, money has been brought down from this project, so will you uh, recover the money or what is the process like? Yeah, we will recover the money from Najib. <laughs> <laughs> he was the one who entered. I've never heard a contract in which you pay on time without work, uh, estimating the work done. Normally, we pay according to the work done. What kind of stupidity is this? To agree to pay on time uh, without, work, uh, without any uh, condition that uh, work must be done. Uh, that, uh, after the, your meeting with the uh, Premier League, 
both electricity and adjustment. And one of them is that uh, investment, uh, mutual welcome investment, but for mutual benefits. So meaning that from now on, investment from China will be strictly scrutinized? Oh, no, they will have to conform to our rules. I, I emphasize that uh, when we come to China, we follow Chinese rule, Chinese law. When they come to Malaysia, they must follow Malaysian rules and Malaysian conditions and Malaysian law. But we have no problem with foreign direct investment before. But this happened because the government of the Sri Najib overlooked all the previous practices and entered into agreement which are very detrimental to our interests. But you're still... Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, China has always wanted to... <laughs> <laughs> has always wanted to build a railroad that link up to ASEAN. So are they still pushing for us to build? What, what is the stand now? The idea of building a railway line from Kunming to Singapore was our idea. I had converted this to Go Chok Tong. I have spoken to the Chinese. I have spoken to uh, written even to Xi Jinping. Uh, that it would be good to have a railway line connecting Malaysia, the Singapore to Kunming. And because I mentioned Singapore, Go Chok Tong was very excited. He was happy to have it. Uh, but, uh, of course, we didn't have the money, so we had to postpone. In the meantime, the Chinese had gone ahead and built a railway line from China through Laos on to Bangkok. Now, from Bangkok to Singapore, there is already a line. So we are now connected. It is, uh, well, it is implemented by the Chinese, but originally it was our idea because we want to improve uh, connectivity between our countries and China. So the HSR is unnecessary? Yeah? The HSR? Is it unnecessary for us? Or? The HSR is not necessary. Because it is only planned for a, a distance of 220 kilometers. At the speed that I travel in the train, the high speed train here, it is 300 kilometers per hour. So it should do the distance in less than an hour. And what is the saving in time? There is no saving in time. You see, if the, for a high speed rail, you need a long distance, then you save time. If you have to travel for three hours, where before you have to take eight hours, then there is a saving of five hours. But if you have to travel from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur and save 15 minutes, you have to pay a lot of money. It would be very stupid. Um, you mentioned about fiscal positions. Uh, did you actually uh, get help from... Chinese government at the time when Malaysia government issues bonds, were they keen on taking up uh, more MGS in the future? If we issue bonds, I mean, anybody can buy, whether it is a government or agencies or certain bodies. Because when you raise bonds, you ask some uh, some bank, like you did with uh, Goldman Sachs, to sell the bonds, but not on the terms that you gave to Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs get 10% of the money they raise. It's too stupid. So, did, did, did they actually show interest in... No, we didn't mention that. All right. Do any pressure from the Chinese government on the uh, <coughs> projects, like CRL, whether we have to... No, no question. We only talk about the financing, not the project itself. So previously you mentioned about financing the loans and things like that with a high interest. How are we going to rationalize all this? The, the, the payment of because of high interest. That's a how are you going yeah, to If we can borrow money at low interest rate, it is worthwhile to borrow the low interest rate money and pay pay the the principal or the some borrowed in order to reduce our cost. We will still be in debt to the new uh, lender, but although we are in debt, we are paying only a very low interest rate, and that uh, will be a savings for us. 
in one of the things you mentioned about uh, new colonialism, <coughs> colonialism during the uh, joint press statement, do you want to describe more about it, or are you dis are you uh, saying any specific country of it? I'm not saying about any specific country. You may remember that President Sukarno talked about new colonialism. That is using economic pressure in order to dominate. Uh, we don't want any anything of that kind. Economic pressure on us will not be accepted. But it is the government of Malaysia wanting to borrow money which uh, landed us in this uh, uh, difficult situation. Tony, you were talking about foreign direct investment. So any good news from the Chinese government that there will be new FBI coming in into Malaysia? They seem interested in uh, investing more in Malaysia. Although the, the companies also, uh, they are interested, and I think uh, we would welcome them, but they must conform to the normal conditions for foreign direct investment. Uh, your meeting with the Chinese investors, Mr. Singh, how was the response towards it? Mm -hmm. Well, the Chinese investors felt worried uh, because I took over, and the people were saying that I was anti Chinese and all that. But I explained to them that we have to look after Malaysian interests. What we are worried about is the debt that we, the projects which are not viable and the, the huge debts which was incurred. That is what, and they understand that as far as <coughs> being business friendly, Malaysia incorporated and all that, I explained it's still on. We are business friendly. Whether they are Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Germans, or whatever, it doesn't matter. We are business friendly. Uh, so during the same meeting, uh, you also revealed that uh, the previous BN administration uh, squeezed 30% out of investments uh, for their own gain. Uh, can you tell us which projects or will there be anti-corruption uh, investigations into this? There were complaints, uh, mainly by uh, local business people that when they have a project, there were some people in the government who demanded that they give 30% 30 per, 30 free shares to certain individuals. Because I can't prove it. I don't have any document. But this is what they told me. Certain individu individuals demand to have 30% free shares on many projects. But I can't prove it. But that is what I was told by the business people. Do you think there should be official reports to MACC perhaps so that they can investigate? <coughs> the business people are quite happy to tell me, but they don't make official report because it's a hassle. You make official report, you have to do this, that and the other, you have to prove all kinds of things will be, uh, will, will be put on them and I think they are very shy. They don't want to tell too much, but they want to tell the new Prime Minister as to what they suffered during Najib's time. So, uh, what, uh, what's the way forward for uh, KL Beijing ties under your administration? I think we will, uh, you know, I, I am known in China as being China friendly when I was Prime Minister before. And I think I can prove that I'm, I have <coughs> not changed. I am just as China friendly as I was before. So this I have managed to convince Chinese, Chinese business people that we will look <coughs> at the, their pro proposal uh, in the way that we look at other foreign investment. But I, I emphasize that it is not about buying land and developing the land. This can be done by Malaysians <coughs> just as well as anybody else. Uh, did you actually ask about Jolo? Is he here in China? I didn't ask anything about Jolo. No. Do you believe that he's in China? <laughs> I think he's probably in China. Mm -hmm. Probably. I can prove it. So, what, what, is, what, what is next now uh, that uh, Tung Daim and, and the council leaders have already resigned? So, what's next? Huh? After the 100 days turn? No, no, no. He says it's 100 days. I never mentioned any 100 days. I want him to be there <laughs> to do part of my work.
Yeah, interview people and all that, and uh, tracing where the money is. That's not my job. I mean, I'm not an expert. I have already four agencies looking into one MDB and other things, but Daim has access to a lot of information somehow, and I think it's useful for him to continue his job. I have not dismissed him. Besides, I haven't paid him one single cent. <laughs> He's working 24 hours a day. Tun, what? Tun, what? You said Jolo, you think Jolo is probably in China. <laughs> Why do you say that? Well, uh, that's the rumor that I hear. I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, this man is very slippery. He, I am told that he has many passports. Uh, like all crooks, he, is, uh, he has passport. He can travel anywhere. Mm -hmm. But he cannot use his economy now. If he wants to, he, to claim it is his, please come to Malaysia and you make a claim in the Malaysian courts. <laughs> If Jolo were here sitting next to you right now, <laughs> <laughs> I'll put an anchor for me. <laughs> Do you believe the rumors that China is harboring him? I don't know about that. People say all kinds of things, but they must show proof. Okay, must say it. Okay. Um, you think that the cancellation of this project have actually affected the Thai, yeah. and now you have actually. Uh, Reinforce and enhance back, uh, the relationship with China? There was a misunderstanding, of course. But uh, now they understand why we have to do it. I don't think China wants to see Malaysia bankrupt. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. There was attempts, uh, sometimes moment earlier on, before you came. Oh, before I came, maybe. <laughs> they didn't understand what I was doing. My job is to explain myself. And now they, they, they understand yeah. and... Yeah. Well, they were very friendly. Yeah. The Prime Minister was friendly, the President was friendly, even the Chairman was friendly. Uh, they didn't say, why are you doing this? Uh, I want to uh, throw you out of, uh, of China. <laughs> nothing, nothing like that. You see, the entertainment, they give me a full... Uh, uh, how many hours? Uh, Twelve, 12 motorcycles escorting me. You know? <laughs> Will you invite him over to KL? I have invited him. I invited Xi Jinping. I have said, and uh, the chairman of the party has already contacted the speaker of the uh, oh, house, uh, inviting, him. inviting him to come to China. The <coughs> relationship, don't have to worry about it. Yeah. You know, I have my relationship with the Chinese. I used to be called the Malay Ultra. In the end, it was Chinese vote. They gave me to the majority in 1999. Not believable. They also invited me to come next year. Must come next year. April. BRI Forum. Okay. 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 Okay.